Good afternoon. And um, Pat Udompersert here and I, Alyssa Goodman, are here to tell you about Worldwide Telescope and its Ambassadors Program. And what I'm going to do is tell you a story about telling stories. And the story is going to start with Leonardo da Vinci and end with Galileo Galilei and uh, take a big detour to the 21st century. So why does it start with Leonardo da Vinci? Because my friend Curtis Wong, who's really the inventor of Worldwide Telescope at Microsoft Research, paired up with programmer Jonathan Fay to take his ideas that he had been using in edutainment CD-ROMs, including a very famous one that you may remember about Leonardo da Vinci, where he used the Codex Lester to tell the story of Leonardo's life and many aspects of his life, but really storytelling, to tell a lot of very technical information. He found the opportunity to combine that mode of thinking with a tremendous amount of online astronomy data. And that's where we come in. I'm an astronomy professor at Harvard. Pat is another PhD astrophysicist and teacher. And we work with our friends at Microsoft Research to make Worldwide Telescope, which is a program we'll show you in just a moment, looks like this, um, accessible to many learners of many ages all over the world. The program's been downloaded 9 million times. And we have a website called the Worldwide Telescope Ambassadors. Ambassadors are people who go out into the world who are themselves expert scientists, and they show people not only how to use the program, but how to understand science using the program. And a lot of what they do has to do with storytelling, and I'll get to that in a moment. I would go through all these detailed statistics about how great Worldwide Telescope is, the new media approach compared to a traditional approach, but I don't have time, so I'll just give you my favorite quote. Uh, one particularly cantankerous teenage boy said it was way cooler than Call of Duty. <laughs> so what more do you want? Well, I can't possibly explain what Worldwide Telescope can do. Some of you saw a demo yesterday. I'll just show you a quick screenshot of a few of the different modes that you can put it in, but basically you can visualize any online astronomy data, which is a great deal. It's more than a petabyte worth of data. Um, you can look at the sky, you can look at planets, you can fly through the universe, you can visualize your own data. This program is a free download that runs either in a web client um, or in Windows and soon to be in other platforms that I can disclose if you ask me later. Um, this is pretty much what the interface looks like. There's all kinds of things you can do. And again, I don't have time to describe all of it. Please go play with it yourself. I will tell you that one of the things that you can do is you can take important stories from astronomy and from the history of science and retell them in a way that the people who originally discovered those stories would just be unbelievably jealous of. And one of those people would be Galileo Galilei. And so if we look here where it says expert-led tours of the universe, what we're going to do in a moment is show you a little snippet of one of those tours. And that tour is about Galileo's observations of Jupiter. Some of you may know that a couple of years ago it was the 400th anniversary of the telescope. Galileo wasn't the first person to use a telescope, he was the first person to use a telescope to look at the sky. And what he did, one of the most important things he did was he looked at Jupiter. And he noticed that there were some dots around Jupiter that seemed to move. And they moved back and forth in a straight line, which is not how the stars on the sky moved and not exactly how Jupiter moved. And it was very curious. And so he made this sort of time series display that you see here in the middle where he drew out the position of Jupiter and then these dots next to it, which he originally thought were stars, but later realized were moons of Jupiter. And you can try to understand it from his notes, but instead I'm going to let Pat show you a little uh, segment of a tour that she and Curtis and I made to explain it a little bit better. Okay, so in this tour we were trying to recreate Galileo's observations um, of Jupiter and its moons. And so here we show in the sky Jupiter, and we dialed in the date, um, January 7th, 1610. And we put in this circle that shows how much of the sky Galileo was able to see in his telescope. And then we took the little snippets of his notes from Sidereus Nuncius that Alyssa just showed in the previous slide, and we overlay them on the sky. And, and we were shocked at how well things matched up, and Galileo took incredibly accurate notes. And then in Worldwide Telescope, it's sort of stuttering here, but you should be able to see um, the moons moving in between the observations. And this is what Galileo had to imagine was going on in his mind. And then um, in Worldwide Telescope, you can switch to a 3D view. This is running a little bit strangely, yeah. sorry. Um, 
but you can imagine the, um, the, how Galileo made the analogy between seeing these moons and dots going around Jupiter to connecting that with other objects like the Earth going around the sun. <laughs> the sun. 